the first part of Theresa May's speech, it was pitch perfect. She was right to talk about the horror of terrorism, we stand together, we're not cowed, all the rest of it. But she violated that in the second part because she then went on to issue political proposals and political ideas. Now, there may be people watching, and it's a perfectly legitimate argument to make that in the aftermath of a terrorist attack, you don't cease campaigning or making political points uh, because the terrorists win or not. But that's not the point because that's what she agreed to do. Or wasn't she being prime ministerial? No, she could have waited. After, after the Westminster attacks, being prime ministerial is being you know, standing on the streets of Downing Street, fine, and expressing horror at the terrorism and unity and all the rest, not then putting forward political policies and proposals. Amber Rudd... But don't we want to know what our Prime Minister's well, going to do? Not when we suspend campaigning. Yes, of course, we need to have that debate in the coming days, absolutely. But couldn't we have to have the day off? And Amber Rudd, in the aftermath of the Westminster attacks earlier this year, said that we shouldn't uh, rush to make sudden proposals. But now she's violated that, that, that consensus. I'm afraid to say, then, for we have to have that political debate. Otherwise, you have the opposition voices being gagged and abiding by it, whilst the government make political proposals. So, fine, you've, you've made that clear, Theresa May. I think it's reprehensible, but we are where we are. And if we're going to have that debate, then listen to voices like you had earlier on, Peter Kirkham, a former senior Met officer, no lefty, I can tell you that nothing, and, and uh, talking about police cuts and the stresses of 20,000 police officers under the watch of Theresa May, who has been Home Secretary for the last six out of seven years and is now Prime Minister of this country. Let's talk about the suppressed report. Just a few days ago this was revealed. A suppressed report about jihadi fundings, particularly, and this is the reason apparently it's been suppressed, because of Saudi links. Saudi Arabia we is don't a... Know that's true. Well, that has we been, don't know that's true. Well, that has been reported. It's in The Guardian, it's in other newspapers as well. Well. Ah, so this is the key point then, isn't it? The, go the, the government should release that report in full, uncensored, and also come clean about the role of the Saudi dictatorship, which at the moment this government is becoming closer to, and argue and, and, and look at the links, the extremism, that that despicable head-chopping dictatorship, which is exporting extremist ideology all over the world, including in this country, which is a threat to national security. So if we're going to have the debate, which is already opened, I didn't do that, other people didn't do that, Theresa May did that this morning. Let's talk about police cuts and the stresses on police forces that people like Peter Kirkham, a former senior Met officer, talked about so eloquently in your programme earlier. Let's talk about the Saudi regime, an ally of this country, which is exporting this sort of ideology the world over. That was also supported by a previous Labour government. What, the... Yeah, oh, not, you can't accuse the Labour leadership in its current form of supporting the Saudi regime because they've opposed it year after year. Government. Well, the Labour Party's position is to end arms sales to Saudi Arabia and oppose the Saudi dictatorship. Let's just be absolutely clear about that. If, I, you know, I, I'm, you know there's a, what is it they say about sinners and repenting and all the rest of it? If Theresa May now wants to go back on her government support for Saudi Arabia and that dictatorship and to stand up to that extremist ideology that threatens to us, then fine, fantastic. I think we'd all support that measures. In fact, let's have a cross-party consensus on Saudi Arabia and its role in radicalisation. But as I've said, she started this debate. She shouldn't have done it. You can't have a situation where the government is making political points whilst the opposition then is forced to be gagged and not say anything. It's ridiculous.